I, I knew I wasn't getting very far on my own. So it's either going to be remembering or relearning. And it takes work. Walk away. Take a break. It's not a big deal. You don't have to do everything that day. You don't have to understand what the intricacies of every problem in every moment. It's hard work. Beth graduated college in 2007 and she didn't pass her FE exam until 15 years later. Her methods were a little unconventional because she took the FE exam with no expectations to pass her FE. When she failed on her third attempt, she learned from it and she was able to change her approach, improve her score, and pass her FE exam. Keep watching to find out how you can do the same thing if you find yourself in a similar situation. Oh yeah, everybody now. Hi Beth, thank you for joining me today. Hello, Kenza. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Awesome. Okay. So first question, tell me why did you decide to take your FE? When I graduated, I ended up uh, at a position with state government and not many people had their PE license. Um, it was one of those I hadn't passed the FE yet. I had taken it in college. Um, but like I said, shortly after graduating, working in an environment where a PE wasn't required for progression and time went on, um, it bothered me that I never did pass the FE. And as time continued, really just kind of that, that urge within me was something that I needed to do for myself. And then on top of that, I really started to look more outwardly into what it is that I wanted to do with my career. And I've taken a turn in my career in addition to passing the FE and pursuing the PE. Awesome. Now, let me ask you this. Throughout the years when you didn't have your FE, did you feel like you, you miss out opportunities career-wise? Um, yes and no, uh, because again, the environment that I worked in uh, with state government, you could, you could, there was a secession um, that didn't require your PE license through um, environmental engineering. They called them environmental engineering assistants. Um, however, personally, I did feel always as if I was cutting myself short. It was one of those that it was something that I always wanted to do. And so internally, I knew that I wasn't accomplishing something that I, kn I knew I needed to. I was missing my own opportunity. Uh, and then like I was sharing uh, in the last few years, I really became more interested in a career change. And that career change was, it, it's going to require a PE in order for me to pursue the path that I want. And so, yes, this it, it would have cost me the opportunity that I want to pursue currently had I not pursued it. Okay. And so, so fast forward 2021. So you graduated in 2007 and in 2021, you decided to take the FE exam, right? Okay. So <laughs> when you started, about, what is it? Uh, really, it was about 2020 is when I decided I'm going to do this. <laughs> okay. It took a little bit longer for me to be able to sit down and pass the exam. So now when, when you started preparing for your FE exam, what do you think you struggled the most with to pass your FE? Um, well, let's put it this way. When I began studying for the FE, I didn't even know if I could pass it. It had already been um, over 12 years when I began to look at the material again. Um, I, I couldn't even remember what a Newton was. <laughs> I had to revisit everything. I had to relearn the terminology. Um, and, and it was... Um, I started looking at a, a handbook, just a, one of those uh, Lindbergh books. And there was so much information in there that I wasn't really getting to a point that I felt like I was comprehending any information. And so once I started with your course and really beginning to see the, the vastness of all the information that was required, but recognize that it was a pace that I could, I could possibly process and retain, I had a little bit more hope, but my concern was retaining all the information. Uh, I really didn't know if I was going to be able to to relearn and remember enough information in order for me to pass the test. Wow. Okay. So let's let's take a step back. So when you first started this process, you didn't believe that you would be able to make it. No, I really didn't know if I'd be able to. What changed? What? Honestly, I can't answer that question because, well, what happened <laughs> was I started the desire to study and pass and it, I just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't go away and I couldn't in good conscience quit. And I just, I kept, 
I kept at it and um, I listened to a lot of your videos. Yeah, I would go for a run and, and put on one of the YouTube videos and it would provide a little bit of encouragement. And I would come back and I would start some other element of the coursework or pick up where I left off. And um, as you've said, I don't know if it's in, if you've said it multiple times or if I just heard it in the same video multiple times, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So Right. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, thank you for sharing that. And then for the listeners watching this, like if you right now believe that you can't make this, I always tell you guys, I believe in all of you. And I believe that every single one of you can pass your FE exam. You just got to make sure you have the right study habits, the right material, and you will get there. And Beth, I'm really happy for you. I'm really happy that you were able to to um, switch that and believe in yourself and make it happen and pass your FE. Okay. I want to ask you another question. Um, so you invested in our course, and I know it's a bit quite of money, right? Um, what made you decide to invest in our courses? I, I knew I wasn't getting very far on my own. Um, I, I can't remember the individuals that I heard you interview before I purchased your course, but their encouragement was what dro- took me to your course page and looking at it. Um, it's like, I'm, I'm willing, I'm willing to, it's a, it's a good investment because it's just one of those that doing what I was doing wasn't really getting me anywhere of, um, well, let's put it this way. It wasn't getting, getting me anywhere of a position of encouragement. I wasn't feeling any more confident about the material. Maybe I was getting somewhere. I don't really know, but I didn't feel like I was getting anywhere. And part of our motivation, like we were talking about before, has to come with confidence. And if your confidence ain't growing, your motivation is going to slip away. It's just that feeling of defeat becomes too much sometimes. And so I was willing to pay the price. Not, I mean, it wasn't even a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what kept you motivated and to keep going, to keep showing up till you pass your FE? Um, well, a lot of it, again, I'll have to give credit to um, you and your coursework and other students in the class because everybody kept saying, when you get to a point that you're too frustrated, walk away, take a break. It's not a big deal. You don't have to do everything that day. You don't have to understand what uh, the intricacies of every problem in every moment. It's hard work. Um, I I hate to admit it, but I think that's one of the things that um, oftentimes stands in the way. It's hard work and I don't want to do it. <laughs> I want to just know it. <laughs> and when I don't just know it, I get really frustrated with myself. Mm-hmm. And so that goes back to that confidence. And um, and then my motivation will, will, will soon fall with that. And so taking a break and, and either going for a run or even taking a, a day off you know, stepping away from whatever the subject matter might be, coming back and revisiting and having another degree of accomplishment returns that motivation and you keep going forward. Yeah, I love that. Let's dive in into your schedule then. How many uh, hours did you study per week? Um, I didn't commit hours to the week. I committed times to the week. And so I would, let's see, because my schedule has changed a little bit to um, to how I'm studying for the PE. Um, I would usually get up at around 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning um, and then coffee, like I said, get go for a run, depending on what time the sun is coming up, <laughs> depending on what time of year it is. And then I would study between uh, 6.30 and 7.30. And then sometime typically in the afternoon, I would have another hour that I would commit and revisit that. And then I would pick particular days a week that I would commit to studying in the evenings. And then Saturday and Sunday, I would always study um, after I ran. And that would be from about nine till maybe two or three in the afternoon. And so there would be some days where I would study longer or later into the evening if I was really feeling motivated. And then there's other days where I would come home and it's been a long day at work and the kids have had 400 different activities and I just, I wouldn't touch it. So, yeah, yeah. And I think that averaged about um, 15 to 20 hours a week, but probably closer to 15 hours a week. So it really, it, for me, it took some time. I mean, it was, it's been 14 years since I've been in school. It's been 14 years since I've really had to study. And the, you, I, I don't know about other people, but I couldn't just 
up and commit 15 hours a week to studying without some kind of transition and, and getting into that habit. That's, that's a pretty big change. What were some of your study habits that you felt like really helped you to sit and kind of study? When you first start your videos, you talk about taking notes. You talk about a cheat sheet. Uh, I didn't really know what that even meant. (laughs) And so the first time I went through the coursework, um, I couldn't have a cheat sheet because it would have been the coursework. <laughs> like I think you remember everything. <laughs> and so the second time I went through <laughs> was when I really understood what you meant by the concept of a cheat sheet right. for this purpose. Of because we have all the information in the handbook, but the cheat sheet is in order for me to tie what it is that I know how to properly use the material in the handbook. <laughs> and right. so that that took some that took some time. I think about every three or four weeks, I would go back and revisit all of the information, all of my notes and make more of a cheat sheet that way. And then, um, and then have that cheat sheet and then revisit that compoundedly and then move forward to, to take in a practice exam. Did that help? It did. I want to go back to when you took the FE exam. So you, you took the FE exam May 2021. You get the result that you failed. What was it like? How did you feel during the moment? And what actions did you take afterwards? Uh, Well, so I wasn't expecting to pass. Um, I knew that I had made progress and I wanted to see where that progress was. Um, I was hoping to pass just because that would be great. But at the same time, too, (laughs) I knew there was more material I needed to learn. And we all want to be good engineers. We don't just want to pass a test. Well, I don't know if we all do. But anyway, that's my goal. Um, and, um, and so I got the results and, um, oh, shucks, which one, was, there was one of them that I didn't, I got like a flat zero on and, um, oh. it's fine. It is what it is. And so anyway, I was able to, to hone down where it is that I need to give them more, give more attention. And then that same Friday or the following Friday is when, again, you had another session and I can't remember the classmate's name that had just passed the FE. And he shared his diagnostic and I compared my diagnostic to his diagnostic and it wasn't that far apart. I was like, well, that means I'm at least on my way. I love it. So you so focus on the progress and I think that's what really keeps you going. And if you're not sure like how much you progress, you feel you start feeling discouraged. But then when you saw that person's diagnostic report that was similar to yours, you were like, okay, I can tell where I am now and I know what to do next. Um, yeah, I, and I, I remember the student, I think it was Loon and I think he actually, he failed and then two months later he passed his FE. Back to the, when you failed the third time. So you just were like, okay, um, I'm going to go back and s- keep s- learning the material that's, that's in our courses, the FE Accelerator. I'm just curious there because it's like, because you studied the morning course, you took the FE, you failed, but then you came back and then you did the same material over, right? How, like, what made you trust that the course was going to help you pass your FE exam? I just, I saw that I was learning. It was just one of those that, um, there's a difference when I would take, when I would look at a problem and not understand the problem and look at the problem and know what the problem's asking and not know how to solve it. There's a difference. There's a lot of hope in that. <laughs> right. If you read a problem and you at least understand what it is that's missing, there's a guide on that. And so that's why I knew I was getting somewhere with it because I was able to understand what it is that I didn't know. Whether before I didn't even know what I didn't know. I didn't understand the questions. Yeah. Yeah. So that. yeah, that's that's how I knew that your coursework was working because I understood all the problems that I had. <laughs> Yeah, they were familiar. You knew (laughs) what they were asking. You just forgot the steps. And that's why when you came back the second time, you're like, I need a like a way to retain information longer. And that's and that's what you tried to work on the second time when you came back. I I really like your progress because or the way the way you approach this whole exam, because a lot of people are afraid to fail from the FE. But Speaking with you here, I noticed that you didn't really have that fear of failing. Uh, When I asked you when you felt the third time, how did you feel? Like, oh, it was, you know, like I just came up with a new plan, you know, like figure out what's going to help me pass. And then you start tackling it and then you pass your FE. So it's like I'm just trying to understand 
like why certain people do afraid they are afraid of failing which even like almost paralyzed them to even take the test and try it because a lot of times I tell students just go in and take the exam and just see where you are just see your progress right and that will give you so much information and like like for you for you for example when you went and you took the exam you were like I'm familiar with this I forgot how to solve it, but I know this stuff, right? I know what I need to do next. It gave you like more clarity on what you need to do. And then also like almost like a belief, like, you know what? I can actually do this. Like this seemed difficult before and seemed really hard because I thought of this exam that was something really difficult. But when you took the exam, you're like, this is very doable. I can do this. And so um, and so that's what I try to tell students sometime when you go into the exam, don't be so afraid of failing. Just do the best you can and see where it takes you. And if you fail, come back and come up with a new plan. And don't let fear hold you, I guess, the fear of failure, you know? So, okay. Okay, so how do you feel right now that you have your EIT? Like, how did passing the FE affected your life? Feels good. I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. <laughs> and I did. It really, like, I feel like a grown up now. I mean, I'm in my 40s and I felt like I finally joined my coworkers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, I mean, that, that was one of the things personally that, yes, I know we're all engineers, but when I'm, when I have coworkers that have their, that have passed the FB and I haven't, I feel like a little kid. If a student comes up to you and asks you to list three things that really helped you pass your FE exam, what would be those three things? enroll in your course um and it's a marathon it's not a sprint and um and the expectation that if you've if you've learned the material before in college you can relearn it again so it's either going to be remembering or relearning and it takes work so I think that's I think that's one of the things that I still struggle with I just wish it would come easy I feel like I've done so much they should just give me my PE and I shouldn't have to work for that either but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, that's I love that all right well hopefully the NCS will he- listen to this interview <laughs> and then they'll contact you <laughs> and then you can negotiate with them <laughs> a 15 year comeback you should just get it <laughs> <laughs> all right well Beth thank you so much for joining me today I really enjoyed talking to you and uh, congratulations again on your FE exam I'm really proud of you and good luck with your PE oh yeah Everybody now.